I'm Justin Watson, I'm a 13 time world pizza champion, and this is how I spin dough. Wadstein is one of the world's most dexterous pizza dough tossers. He can twirl it, he can flip it, he can roll it across his shoulders. In his hands, dough becomes a magical medium of pizza expression. Yeah, it just becomes like a fluid movement, like almost like part of you. It is like a, a dance partner because you're moving around the dough and it's moving around you. Wadstein's mastery of the pizza dough spin has cinched him numerous world pizza championships. Yes, there are pizza competitions, but there's a catch. If you were to want to get involved with the competitions, for one, you have to work at a pizzeria. So it kind of makes it special for people that actually do it for a living. For me, personally, I don't just spin pizzas. I run a pizza place. And the only real requirement is you work in the pizza shop and you put in a lot of practice. Wattstein's practice has definitely paid off. I've won seven individual acrobatics, two team acrobatics. I've won something called pizza triathlon three times, and I've won world's fastest pizza spinner once. Wattstein specializes in what's known as pizza acrobatics. Someone asked me what acrobatic pizza spinning is because like, it, unless you've seen it, it's super hard to explain. They just kind of look at you uh, until you show them or explain them. And then and normally if people don't know what it is, at first, they don't think it's that cool or it doesn't sound that cool. And then when you start doing it, it kind of blows people away. And that's basically a synchronized dough routine where you're incorporating tricks. Normally you have like some type of theme to your show. Think of almost like a gymnastics routine with pizza dough. The rules are, well, you can't do fire because of me. That's not the only guideline for judging though. There's different categories. So synchronization, so if it's synchronized to the beat and the music, then you'll go score high points there. Originality, creativity. For example, I did a routine in Italy where I juggled the soccer ball and pizza dough at the same time. Dexterity, which means how well you're working with the dough. So if you're spinning it and it's looking like a football the whole time or it's constantly got a hole in it or something like that, you'll get scored a little lower. But if they're staying circular and they're not ripping, you'll score higher. Pizza spinning, the, the competitions, the acrobatic pizza spinning competition has um, been around since the 80s, so a little over 30 years it's been going and every year it gets bigger and bigger. Like any skill, there are fundamentals, and for acrobatic pizza, that's the basic toss. Becoming a world pizza champion doesn't just happen overnight, it's a lot of practice, and the first thing you want to start with is the basic toss. What I do is I put my fingertips at the edge and kind of stretch it like a rubber band, and then you're going to twist and throw up with one hand and catch with the other, just like this. Right, from there, you can practice that several times and you'll get to a point where you can roll it into the next toss without stopping. And then the next step is learning how to spin on your fingertips. So what makes spinning on your fingertips hard is that you have to balance not breaking the dough. So dough's a lot different than say someone juggling or something like that because the shape of dough changes. You have to be able to feel where it's gonna break through and your fingers, or your, you start to learn that feeling and spin almost around that spot. You have to balance it. It's not quite your fingertips because it'll break, break through. It's almost like the side of your hand. Then there's the critical transition trick called the whip. And what that is, is basically going hand to hand. And so you're kind of, you go, your hand goes up and around you catch, throw it back, just like that. So when you get fast at that, that's the way you can kind of transition and switch directions of the dough quickly and smoothly. This was actually the hardest thing for me to learn, but it's a good thing I did because I can so quickly change tricks. Um, what makes it hard is making your mind wrap around like switching directions constantly and being able to catch it while it's moving really fast. So it took a long time to like perfect doing that. The whip isn't just a flashy trick. Pro spinners use it to keep their dough circular. So the whip will also help if it starts to become oval, you can whip it back into a circle, basically. And also if the, the center is getting really thin, then you can at least do that and not rip it. Once you're comfortable with the toss, the finger spin, and the whip, it's time to move into advanced maneuvers, like over the shoulders. And the way you're gonna do that is you're gonna turn sideways, put your head forward, 
and you kind of do this, catch it over here. Another cool trick is called the sky high, and that's when you throw it up and roll it down your shoulder. That one's a really cool one, I do that a lot. Also, rolling across your chest is a good one. There's something called the wheel, which is just like that. I learned this with actually a plate, because it forces your hand to switch directions, which is, you have to do it to make the trick work. Wadstein can spin just about anything flat. A plate, a cutting board, even a folding chair. But he says that dough is the hardest thing he's ever spun. Dough is harder because it can rip. For example, if you spin a book, it's not going to rip. So it's the same consistency. Where this will change, it'll get thin in some spots and, and thick in some other spots, and it will rip if you don't spin it correctly. It's mainly the middle finger spinning, but it's all four of these fingers are kind of working together. So you're spreading the, dispersing the, like, instead of one point because your, your finger's gonna go through the dough. But the dough Wadstein spins in competition is way different than the dough he serves his customers. A huge part of what I do is making dough, and if it's not good, you can't pull off a lot of tricks. Yeah, you need ice water, salt, flour, and no yeast because you don't want it to rise whatsoever. The salt helps keep it together. It's, it strengthens the more salt in the dough, the harder it's going to be. It can dry it out. You get to a point where you can kind of feel it. Feels like it needs more water, I'll put a little bit more. Feels like it needs more flour, I'll put a little bit, a little bit more. You just, you get to learn what, what it feels like, basically. You definitely don't want to eat it. If you ate this dough, it, it wouldn't make you sick, but it would taste terrible. It just tastes like pure salt. A single piece of dough might last just a few seconds while Wadstein is spinning. He's one of the fastest twirlers, and the tension in the dough is high enough to render it useless after a few tricks. That's thanks to some basic physics. Teachers often use pizza dough spinning as a way to explain the concept of angular momentum, showing how a chef's hands exert torque on the dough and cause it to spin. When spinning, centripetal force produces tension in the dough and stretches it out. That's fine for them, says Wadstein. You don't actually need to know uh, the physics to do it. No, Wadstein knows that dough is never as simple as a math equation. It's a moving, ever-changing mass, always threatening to pull apart and ruin the show. Your hands are constantly reshaping the dough and feeling the thicker part that'll allow you to spin one dough longer. I've done it so long that I can literally feel it if it's starting to not become a circle and your hands will reshape it, and then you spin it, and then you reshape it. The whole time you're doing it, you're constantly trying to keep the shape of a circle, which is really hard to do when you're spinning that fast and, do it, and sending it in so many different directions. Wadstein has been spinning things since he was a kid. For me, it was like, I was kind of ADD a little bit. So like in class, I would spin binders, and, and I, I just enjoyed working in the pizza shop when I was a kid. And so my grandparents opened a pizza place when I was 13. We didn't really work the table for a long time, but I, I originally learned how to spin a, a towel while doing dishes. Uh, worked my way up to the line. I moved to Santa Cruz and worked for my aunt who runs a place and she had this dinner and a show concept. The whole restaurant stops, all the servers do a dance, and then they have pizza spinners. I was it before, uh, but they still have some spinners that do shows. In 2005, he entered his first competition in Las Vegas. He walked away the top spinner in the U.S. and ranked fourth in the world. And his skills caught the eye of veteran world pizza champion Tony Geminani, who invited Wadstein to join his world pizza champion spinning team. They still spin together. And he's been a huge, huge mentor to me. Geminani and his other team members were there cheering Wadstein on as he spun fire at the world championships in 2009. I was the first one to do fire. Uh, I did it at a competition in Italy, and actually when I first did it, it was just a big wooden board, a towel from the hotel nailed to it with some gasoline, and we lit it on fire. The pizza spinning does look really cool, especially when you light it on fire. I mean, it, it's just, when you first see it, it's pretty amazing. Yeah, so you can't do it anymore, and I'm pretty sure it's because of that. Uh, no one knew I was going to do it. Wadstein may not be able to use his fire flourish in competition any longer, but he still does it in demonstrations. And even after two decades of spinning, he's still pushing himself and the dough to do even more extreme things. So the reason I keep doing it is because I keep getting better. Even still, 20 years later, I'm still learning new tricks and I'm still stepping it up and I still love doing it.